I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. We will now have the opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, now to His temple draw Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavements, praying 
that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord, our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you will give to your troubled children. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life, lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Family and friends, brothers and sisters, we are met in this solemn moment to commend our sister, Daphne Monica Muirhead, into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, and by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. I take this opportunity to welcome you all to the virtual Thanksgiving service of the life, for the life of Daphne Monica Muirhead and committal of her ashes in the columbarium at the Coke Methodist Church. We will now be introduced to the tributes as her daughter Suzanne brings that to the start. Mommy was born in Sawyer's Trelawney. She attended Westwood High School for Girls and was later accepted to nursing school in England. Tony was born in Sawyer's as well. However, she wasn't able to take him with her at the time, so he remained with her mother, our grandmother, in Trelawney, while she pursued her studies to become a registered nurse. Tony later migrated and settled in New York, where he was welcomed and embraced by daddy's aunts and extended family who were instrumental in his life. It was in England where mommy's courtship with daddy began, which led to their marriage and Michael's birth. Upon returning to Jamaica, Patrick and I came along. And then came her grandchildren, an organic and incomparable love flourished. She had a special and unique relationship with each of them. Many of the tributes today will be given by her grandchildren and will illuminate her influence on their lives in a strong, as a strong matriarch and role model throughout the years and the glue that would keep the family together after daddy's passing two and a half years ago. Her legacy will continue through them, so it is only fitting that they take the lead today in delivering the tributes. First from the grandchildren, then from Tony and Noreen, then from the Coke Methodist Church, Janet Barrett will read that. And also we have the grandchildren singing all things bright and beautiful. So the one thing that I want to remember, I think that we all should, especially during this time, uh, we're grieving and mourning, uh, is that you know, Grandma, she lived such a such a full life, and 
it seemed, especially as a child, it seemed like she'd been everywhere and met everyone and, you know, been to every museum, seen every piece of art. She really had enjoyed, you know, the finer things in life. <laughs> and I'm grateful that she got to do all that. Um, besides, you know, the things that uh, she did, the places she went, uh, I think just in the most simple terms, people just enjoyed her, her company. And she was funny, and she always had something clever to say, and I always liked that. And yeah, she just, she had, she had an elegance about her um, that I, I don't think, I think it was very innate. I don't think it can be taught. And just thinking about memories, it, it is hard to distinguish um, you know, up until recently. It's hard to distinguish memories that don't include granddad. Um, and all that really tells me is that, you know, they, they really were. They, they were so in love. And, you know, they really were inseparable at times, and just one. And I think it's just, a, you know, they set you know, a great example for me as a grandchild. And you know, I'll, I'll very much, I'll miss her a lot, but I don't think uh, any of us will be forgetting her anytime soon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Muirhead. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the life of my beloved grandmother, Daphne Muirhead, who was affectionately known as Melly, and back in her hometown, she was known as Swindles. Reminiscing on the good times, one day after school, I asked my grandmother, what is the secret to living so long? She paused for a few seconds, then said, a happy life. Happy childhood, happy marriage. After learning this valuable information, I knew that I had one task whenever I interacted with her and that was to make her happy so I shared funny stories with her and we would have hysterical moments that would last for a while whenever she wanted help whether she asked to the best of my ability I provided a helping hand whenever I had good news I told her I danced randomly in front of her with or without music just to hear her laugh. We spent a lot of quality time together. From doing the jungle in the newspaper to watching Jeopardy to walking together outside and even going out for a drive. And whenever I was not there, I would call her and let her know that I was thinking of her. Grandma made me happy as well by just being the simply amazing person we love and admire. She, st she shared stories about her past that left me astonished, grateful, and will aid in me raising my standards. She prayed for all of her grandchildren, for we live by faith and not by sight. Grandma was a type of person who did what was necessary for her loved ones. Whenever I had a bad day, I would call my grandmother. She would say, Kelly, everything will be all right. I know it can be hard sometimes, but you will be all right. Because of you, Grandma, I'm able to keep my chin up and greet the world with a smile on those days. I remember on the day of my good friend's wedding, I told my grandmother that when she sees me in this dress, 
she'll be in for a surprise so when she saw me her eyes were open wide and she said mama sita i smiled and said i told you my grandmother was an excellent cook i'm happy that i was around to learn a few recipes from her grandma had a welcoming personality whenever her friends and family came over she was very hospitable she made it feel like you made her day by just coming by now she is at home with god for all my 24 years on this earth i am honored being your granddaughter by naming me kelly you destined me to be a warrior i wish you were here to see my dreams come true but i know you are rooting for me sleep well grandma stay happy you'll be missed but you'll be cherished in my heart to my grandmother daphne muirhead grandma i'm very grateful that we were able to share so many memories. You were truly an unforgettable person in my life and I will never forget our countless time spent together. I'll never forget our evening walks up and down the complex where we had some of our best conversations, including the story of how you and granddad ended up meeting and hearing how times are different when you were a young girl growing up in the country. I won't forget your flavorful baked mac and cheese meal, calling to see how you were doing multiple times per week, and watching Jeopardy with you whenever I could beside you in your favorite chair and getting up when the news started shortly after. I'm most happy that I got the opportunity to let you know that I loved you some weeks ago and you were able to tell me the same, regardless of your discomfort at that moment. To be completely honest, after that phone call, I shed a few tears because it was something that I have always wanted to tell you. Undoubtedly, you were the most understanding person I knew, and everything you did was with the elegance you displayed all your life. You would represent the ideal image of perfection in my eyes. I'm grateful for the months we spent living together. You turned me into an expert shopper who specializes at choosing the better tomatoes in the supermarket along with other fruits and vegetables. And you also taught me many important lessons which I cannot thank you enough for today. Thank you for the love you always showed others, regardless of the situation. I hope I reciprocated it well enough to you. To think that someone like her felt that way about her entire family should make us all feel more than just a little good. We can never forget that there's a part of her in each of us, something that she gave us and asked for nothing in return. At some point in the future, there will be times or situations may arise where we would want so much to talk to her, be with her, or ask for her opinion on how to go about the situation. I truly hope that whenever those times indeed arise, we can begin to look to each other and find that part of her that she gave to each of us. I have no doubt that we can now learn to lean on each other and rely on each other the way that we always knew we could with her. Maybe then she won't seem quite so far away. Grandma, 
Thank you for your wisdom, humor, tenderness, generosity, empathy, willingness to listen, and your unconditional love. You have lived a phenomenal life, and I'm truly grateful I got to be a part of it for 22 years. A tribute to my grandma though, more affectionately called mom. I remember when I had moved back to Jamaica with my dad and they had thrown me in this foreign place they referred to as school. I knew no familiar faces and was eager to hear the end of school bell ring so I could see her burgundy crested out, pull up to the front steps of Immaculate Prep, ready to collect me and bring me back to familiarity. We would then head up to Rockhampton where she would prepare me an afternoon snack and ask me every day, Michelle, why your hair looks so messy at the end of the school day? At that time, dad was my hairstylist and only knew one hairdo, a plaited ponytail, which was the easiest thing to mess up. She would try her best to neaten it in some way before daddy came to pick me up, but that was futile most of the time. As I got older, and so did she, I would make it a habit to visit more often. She would always greet me with a bright, Michelle, followed by a hug and we would sit for hours talking about whatever came to mind. Mom was always trying to feed you. So after, soon after you get there, she'd always ask, you want something to eat? I have so and so in the fridge. Oh, and some lemonade to drink, which I never refused, especially those lemonades. She has always been a woman to exude pride and tenacity. No matter what she was going through with her illness, you would never know she was in pain or was unwell. She was always decked out in, uh, in her outfits, even if she wasn't leaving the house. She was always prepared for someone to just drop by. Mom always had her hair done, her nails done, making sure everything was on point. She never missed an appointment with Jean, unless it clashed with her doctor's appointments, or she really wasn't feeling well, which was quite rare because she would never let you know that she was feeling ill. I'd always interpreted that as, no matter how you're feeling or what turmoil or turbulence life throws at you, you never let it show. Always put the best you forward. Look great, feel great. When dad was away in Antigua, I would take mom to her doctor's appointments and we'd always have a good laugh when the windshield wiper men would approach the window and she would quickly say, no, 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 and stop them before they, I could even get a word out. And we would laugh and she'd tell me how she used to do the same thing when granddad approached the same, the same exact light and he'd be like, Melly, all right, it's all right. <laughs> After one of her doctor's appointments, she said, Michelle, let's go have lunch, my treat. We had such a nice afternoon talking and laughing and just enjoying our meal and each other's company. In the car ride back to the house, she said, Michelle, that was so good. I really enjoyed myself. That was an excellent choice. It had felt so good that just this one lunch date could change up her routine, her day-to-day -day routine, and just bring her so much joy, even if it was just for that moment. Mom really enjoyed her com the company of her children and her grandchildren. So much so you could see the excitement on her face and hear it in her voice. So now every time I go by the house, I just wish I could hear her say, Michelle, just one more time and have our random conversations. <clears throat> now there's a void there and I'm still listening out for her to say my name and greet me at the door or even find her in the kitchen ready to offer me something to eat. But the only comfort I have in all of this is knowing that God relieved her of all the pain she endured in these past weeks. So though I am heartbroken, by you not being here with us anymore, mom. I know that God loves you and he knew best for you. I'll always love you, mom. My grandmother was known by many names depending upon who it was that was calling out to her. Mrs. Muirhead, Daphne, and Melly to name a few. But to me, she was just mom. So much time has passed, I couldn't give you the reason as to why. It's just the only name I can remember using to call her from a young age. And she always responded. If you ask me to guess, I would likely think to respond, maybe it was because she was so kind, gentle, 
and loving towards me that she gave me the same feelings as my own mother did. So I adopted to calling her mom. As a child, I visited and stayed with my grandparents every summer and she would take me everywhere with her. We would go see her patients and she always had a kind word for them, followed with a warm smile. And that was her demeanor for everybody we would come across on our outings. She had a warm spirit that everyone gravitated towards. When her workday was over, she catered to me without limit. All I had to do was ask. Looking back at my childhood, being that I was the first grandchild in the family, I'm sure she was proud to show me off. And now as a grown man, I'm proud that she was my grandmother. Those are the memories that I will forever cherish and hold dear in my heart. If I could talk to her right now, I would say, Mom, I know that you're with Granddad and Uncle Patrick, feeling no more pain and very happy. So it's with that thought, I won't be selfish wishing you were still here with me, but instead be happy for you, knowing that you're smiling down and seeing just how much you are loved. I'll forever love you, Mom. I'm Tony. This is my wife, Noreen. And we are so very sorry because of COVID-19. We can't join you in Jamaica. But I got to tell you something about my mother. Mothers are very special. They bring you into the world. They nurture you and give you love until you're able to be on your own. My mother was very special. Many would love to have a mother like mine for her charm, her understanding, and her gentleness. Unfortunately, COVID has come between us and I can't be there. But mom, you will be greatly missed but never, never, ever be forgotten. You know, this morning, as I was reflecting on Daphne and Dave, I was reflecting on Daphne and Dave, and just thanking God for Daphne's quiet courage. Two doves flew past my window, and I see many birds in my yard, but never doves. Um, it, it's very strange, but it brought me comfort. You know, um, it brought me comfort to know that perhaps Daphne and Dave are together again. As you know, Daphne was soft-spoken, elegant, and graceful. She will be greatly missed, but never forgotten, for I see her in my children and my grandchildren, and I continue to thank God. Tribute from the Cope Memorial Methodist Church on the occasion of the passing of Mrs. Daphne Muirhead. A beautiful woman uses her lips for truth, her voice for kindness, her ears for compassion, her hands for charity, and her heart for love. These words from inspirational writer Rutten represent who Daphne Muirhead was to the Cope Memorial Methodist Church family, of which she was a part for some six decades. She was faithful in attendance and supportive of the church's programs and activities, except when ill health and overseas travel kept her away. She was particularly keen on ensuring her attendance at communion services demonstrative of the importance of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper in her relationship with God. Daphne and her late husband, the love of her life, Ambassador the Honorable David Muirhead, were a delightful couple. He, the dashing and suave advocate and diplomat, she, the calm, elegant, and charming lady. They truly complemented each other in their over 60 years together and were an inspiration to younger couples as they arrived for church and took their accustomed seats. 
They were clearly at one in their commitment to continue coming out for worship and doing all they could for as long as they could as members of this community. When Daphne's husband died just over two years ago, if her son Michael was unable to accompany her to church, either Karen Finley or myself would happily undertake that role. Beautifully attired, unfailingly punctual, and with her characteristic smile, she would be standing among the orchids outside her door, ready to be picked up at the appointed hour. Sister Daphne was never one to make a fuss. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, she could not attend church as she rightly followed the strict rules laid down and enforced by son Michael. Her heart was at coke, however, and she would quietly ask Karen to deliver her offering for the work of the church, clearly happy as she handed over her envelopes to maintain this connection as a member of our congregation. Numbered among the June birth month group, Sister Daphne played her part in the annual rally of the months, participating in the group's discussions and plans for fundraising activities, be it cake baking or some other project. She enjoyed a special friendship with the June leader, Miss Leslie McCray, and they talked regularly. Evidence of Daphne's compassion and charity was borne out in the years of her involvement with the Jamaica National Children's Home, which is owned and operated by the Jamaica Methodist District. She was a founding member of the Friends of the Jamaica National Children's Home and served as its inaugural secretary in 1990 before assuming the presidency. She joined her husband on his tour of duty as Jamaica's High Commissioner to London, but returned as an active member of the Friends of the National Children's Home, contributing to various initiatives to help meet the needs of the children and the staff. No doubt her training as a nurse was put to good use in the mission to assist in providing a safe and loving environment for these children in need of special care and protection. We, the members of Cope Memorial Methodist Church, will remember Sister Daphne Muirhead as a cheerful, genuine, and godly individual with a beautiful spirit. Always a lady, her presence will be sorely missed. We are comforted in knowing that she has gone home to the Lord whom she served and has now joined her beloved husband David and son Patrick, who predeceased his parents in 2016. Walk good, Sister Daphne, and may the angels take you into paradise.
who pay tributes and so graphically reflected the life of our or their sister. We will now have a reading of scripture, the first reading of scripture from 2 Corinthians 4 by her son Michael. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 7 to 18. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not heartbroken, struck down, but not destroyed always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that one, the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an external weight of glory beyond all measure because we look not at what can be seen but at what cannot be seen for what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal the reading of the of the word our second reading is from the Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Praise be to Christ our Lord. I am the minister at Coke Methodist Church and the pastor of our departed sister Daphne. And so I will be bringing you a short message to comfort the family and to challenge us all. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Life is full of challenges, uncertainties, and sometimes this, these uncertainties, uncertainties bring us to a place of doubt and fear and sometimes these uncertainties challenges us to be confident in our lives thank God for Jesus Jesus offers us hope he offers us words of comfort and this is the faith that our sister Daphne had. She trusted in Jesus. And as a result, she lived her life with confidence. She lived her life with hope. And she lived her life with commitment. I therefore commend to us the words of Jesus that our sister Daphne held dear to her heart. He said to his disciples, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so our sister's faith was in Jesus, in the fact that Jesus came from heaven, Jesus lived an exemplary life free of any faults or sins, perfect as an example for us to follow. Not only did he do this in this present life, but he died and conquered death. He rose again and went back to heaven. The scriptures tell us this. Now, shouldn't we believe Jesus when he says, I am the way and the truth and the life? No one comes to the Father except through me. So that's the kind of promise that our sister Daphne held dear to her heart that gave her the confidence to live her life with love and commitment and hope and confidence. I commend to all persons who are hearing now to make that commitment to Christ if you have never done so. And for those who have done it, we encourage you to continue in faith and confidence so that when Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, we will have, all have a grand reunion because of our faith in Jesus. May God be your guide. Amen. we offer now a prayer for the family. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word encourages us. Your word tells us that we do not mourn as one without hope. And so, Lord God, we thank you 
for your promises in your word and that all who believe in you will have eternal life. Thank you for the example that your daughter Daphne left for us. Thank you for her life. Thank you, Lord God, that she set an example for her children, her grandchildren, and all her family to follow. And we pray that your promise of peace be with them so that even as they move forward, they can cope with the loss of their loved ones. And as they move forward, they can live their life in confidence, knowing that there is a possibility that they will see her again. But this depends on you, on faith in you. So give them that faith. Give them that confidence. Give them that assurance. And protect and shield them. Prosper their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite you, wherever you are, to stand at this time. We know we are not all in one place as we have the prayer of commendation. Let us pray. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our sister Daphne Monica to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have the benediction. Please receive it. Now the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now have the recessional hymn, that great hymn of triumph. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord.
As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Since our sister Daphne has departed out of this life, an almighty God in his mercy has taken her to himself. We therefore commit her dust to dust, ashes to ashes, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Both of you. Let us pray. O Lord God, grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. And now the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.